Welcome to our service of the Word from St. Peter's EMGL Lutheran Church in Winnipeg on the third Sunday of Easter. Willkommen zum Gottesdienst aus der evangelisch lutherischen St. Petri Gemeinde in Winnipeg am dritten Sonntag nach Ostern, dem Sonntag Misericordias Domini. Alleluja, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluja. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. Die Gnade unseres Herrn Jesus Christus, der Liebe Gottes und die Gemeinschaft des Heiligen Geistes sei mit euch allen. Amen. From Psalm 30 I will exalt you, O Lord, because you have lifted me up and have not let my enemies triumph over me. O Lord, my God, I cried out to you, and you restored me to health. You brought me up, O Lord, from the dead. You restored my life as I was going down to the grave. Sing to the Lord, your servants of his. Give thanks for the remembrance of his holiness. For his wrath endures but the twinkling of an eye, his favor for lifetime. Weeping may spend the night, but joy comes in the morning. While I felt the cure, I said, I shall never be disturbed. You, Lord, with your favor, made me as strong as the mountains. Then you hid your face, and I was filled with fear. I cried to you, O Lord, I pleaded with the Lord, saying, What profit is there in my blood if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you or declare your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned my wailing into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. Therefore, my heart sings to you without ceasing. O Lord, my God, I will give you thanks forever. Let us pray. Restoring God, fed and nourished by your word and at your table, Strengthen us to serve as your Son's body in the world. Grant that we, like Peter, may follow your Son's command to feed his sheep. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Wir beten. Jesus Christus, du wandelst das Leben von Grund auf. Du eröffnest neue Perspektiven. Du machst Mut, umzukehren, wo wir fehlgehen. Öffne uns die Augen, die Ohren und die Herzen, dass deine Gnade Einzug hält und Wohnung nehmen kann in unserem Leben. Dass wir mit dir das Fest des Lebens feiern, jetzt und in Ewigkeit. Amen. The Gospel according to St. John, the 21st chapter. After this, Jesus revealed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he revealed himself in this way. Simon P Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples were together. Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. They said to him, We will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, But that night they caught nothing. Just as day was breaking, Jesus stood on the shore, yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, do you have any fish? They answered him, No. He said to them, Cast the net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because of the quantity of fish. The disciple whom Jesus loved, therefore said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment, for he was stripped for work, and threw himself into the sea. The other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, but about a hundred yards off. When they got out on land, They saw a charcoal fire in place with fish laid out on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore, full of large fish, 153 of them. 
and although there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to the disciples, and so with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus was revealed to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Feed my lambs. He said to him a second time, Simon, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Truly, truly, I say to you, when you were young and used to dress yourself and walk wherever you wanted, but when you are old, you will stretch out your hands, and another will dress you and carry you where you do not want to go. This he said to him, by what kind of death he was to glorify God. After saying this, he said to him, Follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. Wir hören das Evangelium nach Johannes im 21. Kapitel. Danach offenbarte sich Jesus abermals den Jüngern am See Tiberias. Er offenbarte sich aber so. Es waren beieinander Simon Petrus und Thomas, der Zwilling genannt wird, und Nathanael aus Kana in Galiläa und die Söhne des Zebedeus und zwei andere Jünger. Spricht Simon Petrus zu ihnen, ich will fischen gehen. Sie sprechen zu ihm, so wollen wir mit dir gehen. Sie gingen hinaus und stiegen in das Boot und in der Nacht fingen sie nichts. Als es aber schon Morgen war, stand Jesus am Ufer, aber die Jünger wussten nicht, dass es Jesus war. Spricht Jesus zu ihnen, Kinder, habt ihr nichts zu essen? Sie antworteten ihm, nein. Er aber sprach zu ihnen, werft das Netz zur Rechten des Bootes, so werdet ihr finden. Da warfen sie es aus und konnten es nicht mehr ziehen wegen der Menge der Fische. Da spricht der Jünger, den Jesus lieb hatte, zu Petrus, es ist der Herr. Als Simon Petrus hörte, dass es der Herr war, gürtete er sich das Obergewand um, denn er war nackt und warf sich ins Wasser. Die anderen Jünger aber kamen mit dem Boot, denn sie waren nicht fern vom Land, nur etwa zweihundert Ellen, und zogen das Netz mit den Fischen. Als sie nun ans Land stiegen, sahen sie ein Kohlefeuer und Feuer darauf und Brot. Spricht Jesus zu ihnen, bringt von den Fischen, die ihr jetzt gefangen habt. Simon Petrus stieg hinein und zog das Netz an Land, voll großer Fische, 153. Und obwohl es so viele waren, zerriss doch das Netz nicht. Spricht Jesus zu ihnen, kommt und haltet das Mahl. Niemand aber unter den Jüngern wagte ihn zu fragen, wer bist du? Denn sie wussten, dass es der Herr war. Da kommt Jesus und nimmt das Brot und gibt's ihnen, desgleichen auch die Fische. Das ist nun das dritte Mal, dass Jesus den Jüngern offenbart wurde, nachdem er von den Toten auferstanden war. Als sie nun das Mahl gehalten hatten, spricht Jesus zu Simon Petrus, Simon, Sohn des Johannes, hast du mich lieber, als mich diese haben? Er spricht zu ihm, ja, Herr, du weißt, dass ich dich lieb habe spricht Jesus zu ihm, Weide, meine Lämmer. Spricht er zum zweiten Mal zu ihm, Simon, Sohn des Johannes, hast du mich lieb? Er sprach zu ihm, Ja, Herr, du weißt, dass ich dich lieb habe. Spricht Jesus zu ihm, Weide, meine Schafe. Spricht er zum dritten Mal zu ihm, Simon, Sohn des Johannes, hast du mich lieb? Petrus wurde traurig, weil er zum dritten Mal zu ihm sagte, hast du mich lieb, und sprach zu ihm, Herr, du weißt alle Dinge, du weißt, dass ich dich lieb habe. Spricht Jesus zu ihm, weide meine Schafe. 
Wahrlich, wahrlich, ich sage dir, als du jünger warst, gürtest du dich selbst und gingst, wo du hin wolltest. Wenn du aber alt wirst, wirst du deine Hände ausstrecken und ein anderer wird dich gürten und führen, wohin du nicht willst. Das sagte er aber, um anzuzeigen, mit welchem Tod er Gott preisen würde. Und als er das gesagt hatte, spricht er zu ihm, folge mir nach. Das Evangelium des Herrn. Gnade und Friede sei mit euch von Gott, dem Vater und von Jesus Christus, unserem Herrn. Grace and peace to you from God, the Father and from Jesus Christ, our Lord. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, liebe Brüder und Schwestern in unserem Herrn Jesus Christus. Letzte Woche hörten wir im Johannesevangelium, wie Jesus zu seinen verängstigten Jüngern hinter verschlossenen Türen kam und ihnen, im wahrsten Sinne des Wortes, die Türen wieder aufbrach und sie nach draußen schickte. Wie mich mein Vater sandte, so sende ich euch, sagt er ihnen. Im heutigen Evangeliumstext kriegen wir zu hören, dass die Jünger rausgegangen sind. Doch, anstatt die Kunde von Jesu Auferstehung in Jerusalem zu verbreiten, treffen wir sie in ihrer alten Heimat in Galiläa an, wo sie auf dem See Tiberias, auch See Genezareth genannt, ihrem alten Beruf nachgehen, dem Fischen. Last week we heard in John's Gospel how Jesus came to his timid disciples behind locked doors, just to break the doors open for them, in order to send them outside again. As he told them, as the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. In today's Gospel lesson from John we hear that the disciples went outside, but instead of proclaiming the risen Lord in Jerusalem, we find them in their old home territory in Galilee at Lake Tiberias, also called the Sea of Galilee, where they resumed their old line of work, fishing. It seems they fell back to old patterns of their lives before Easter, even to times before Jesus called them to follow him. While we learn in Matthew 28 that Jesus told his disciples that he would go ahead of them to Galilee, they don't leave the impression that they were looking there for the company of their teacher Jesus. Rather, Peter had the idea to go fishing on the lake. Six other disciples were in the boat with him. But the nightly fishing expedition was unsuccessful. The next morning, Jesus, whom the disciples did not recognize, stood on the shore of the lake to tell them that they should cast the net on the right side of the boat. And after they hauled in a great catch, This incident resembles a similar story that is reported in Luke chapter 5 when Jesus encountered Peter for the first time, which led to Jesus' call to Peter to follow him. He even gave him concrete instructions to build the church, to watch over the community of believers, feed, tend my sheep, he told him. In Johannes 21 hören wir von der dritten Begegnung zwischen Jesus und seinen Jüngern. Welche Lehren hält dieser Text für uns bereit? Was können wir von der Erzählung lernen? Ich möchte festhalten, wenn wir dem auferstandenen Herrn begegnen, können wir nicht mehr zu einer vorösterlichen Wirklichkeit zurückkehren, sondern wir werden beauftragt, die nachösterliche Herrlichkeit zu verkündigen. In John 21, we are told, that this was the third appearance of the risen Lord before his disciples. What does this text teach us? What can we learn from this passage? I think the text teaches us a major lesson in that when we meet the risen Lord, we can't resort to a pre-Easter existence, but we have to go out to proclaim the new resurrection post-Easter reality. Let us explore in detail how this text still speaks to us today. Wollen wir uns also etwas genauer anschauen, welche interessanten Beobachtungen der Text für uns heute noch bereithält. Als erstes erkennen wir, dass Jesus zu uns kommt. Er gibt sich dabei nicht zu erkennen, sondern lässt sich erkennen. First of all, we learn that Jesus comes to us. Although he does not reveal himself, the disciples recognize him. Not immediately, but eventually. 
This is a case with all the reports of the risen Jesus appearing before his disciples. They did not recognize him based on his outer appearance. Jesus did not even tell them, look, it is I, Jesus. No, they recognized Jesus based on certain mannerisms. Mary Magdalene knew that the man whom she initially mistook for the gardener was Jesus when he called her by her name. The two disciples on the way to Emmaus recognized Jesus in the breaking of the bread. In that moment they realized why our hearts were burning within us while he opened to us the scriptures. The disciples could identify the risen Lord as a crucified Lord by his wounds. After the miraculous catch of fish, there was no need for the disciples to ask, Who are you? For they knew who the man was who was waiting for them on the shore. The same, in the same way, we can recognize and identify Jesus still today. In baptism, he calls us by our names. In the breaking of the bread at the altar, we become aware of his presence in our midst. We meet him in scripture. Every day he walks alongside us. He even comes to us in the form of our needy neighbor. His promise from Matthew 28 rings true. Behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Als zweites erfahren wir, dass wir immer nur die Gäste sind. Jesus ist dagegen stets der Gastgeber. Secondly, we learn that we are always guests, while Jesus is always the host. It is Jesus who helped the disciples with the immense catch of fish. When they reached the shore in their boat, Jesus was already waiting for them. He got the charcoal fire going, and the breakfast with broiled fish was ready. In a similar way, it is Jesus who invites us to come to the altar for communion. Whether at the shore of the lake or at the altar in church, we experience God provides for us. Zudem ist Jesus der Geber der Fülle. In addition, Jesus is a giver of fullness. He is the giver of our abundance. Already in the Sermon on the Mount, in Matthew chapter 6, he told us not to worry, for worrying is what the pagans do. Rather, we should trust that God will provide for us. He will provide for us and give us food, clothing, a place to live, health. We can trust the Lord. Time and again, God proved to us that he cares for us his children. Certainly we like to be people of deeds. We like to be in control of things. Then again, much like the disciples, we notice that there are days when we fish in vain. We give all we have, but to no avail. We can take pains to acquire our daily bread, but there are times when we come back empty-handed, when matters of life get out of hand. From the disciples we can learn. We can take the plunge when we meet Jesus and allow ourselves to be surprised by him. There are certainly things that we can do on our own, but God gives us the ability to act. He equips us with what we need to be productive. In John chapter 15, Jesus uses the imagery of the vine and the grapes. By remaining in Jesus, we are able to accomplish great things. In the words of Jesus, whoever abides in me will bear much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. The disciples followed Jesus' instructions. They cast out the net. They pulled in a great catch. We are told that there were 153 fish in the net. Why this number, 153? Theologians of all times have brooded over the meaning of that number. For instance, Church Father Jerome, he died around 420 AD, stated that 153 was the number of species of fish that were known. This means that one fish of each kind was caught in the net. This was understood as a requirement for the church to bring the gospel to all the nations, to introduce the peoples of the world to the risen Lord. For those of us who enjoy mathematical games, 153 is an interesting number. It is the sum of all the numbers from 1 to 17, that is, 
1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 17 equals 153. 17 is a number that you get when you first add each individual number of 153, that is 1 plus 5 plus 3 equals 9, and then you divide 153 by 9, that is 153 divided by 9 equals 17. Again, some theolog theologians saw some deeper meaning here in that they regarded 17 as a perfect number for it represents the Ten Commandments and the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. Maybe we are reading too much into the meaning of that number 153. Maybe it was meant to simply capture the great quantity of fish in the net that, with Jesus' help, no fish got changed into an abundance of fish. So that the disciples whom so that the disciple whom Jesus loved could cry out, It is the Lord. The text also explains that the net did not break despite the large number of fish. We can hear this as a beautiful illustration for the church's unity of faith in Jesus. Even though there are many different churches with differing theologies, the belief in the crucified and risen Lord is the unbreakable net on which the faith of the church rests. Drittens, hören wir von dem Kohlenfeuer, auf dem Jesus das Frühstück zubereitete. Das Kohlenfeuer weist dabei auf einen Neubeginn in Gnade und Versöhnung hin. The text offers us a third lesson. It lies in the charcoal fire on which Jesus prepared the breakfast for his disciples. It stands for new beginnings based on grace and reconciliation. We remember that Peter wanted to warm himself at a charcoal fire while Jesus was tried and interrogated inside the palace. On three occasions people confronted Peter. They asked him if he was also one of Jesus' followers, for they recognized him as a Galilean. Each time Peter told them he did not know the man. Three times Peter denied Jesus. In our Gospel text we hear that Jesus was waiting for his disciples by a charcoal fire. There he engaged in a conversation with Peter specifically. Three times he asked him, Peter, do you love me? As if to tell him, Peter, you said you did not know me, but I know you. I stand by your side. I want to know, do you stand by my side? Do you love me, Peter? The text tells us that Peter was grieved because Jesus asked him three times, Do you love me? This question made him think of his moment of weakness when he denied Jesus instead of defending him or standing up for him. Peter failed to profess Jesus more boldly as he had done once before when he said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Even though Jesus confronted Peter with this moment of denial, he did not rebuke him. Instead, he prepared him for a new task when he instructed him graciously, gently, and lovingly to tend to feed my sheep. There are plenty of times when we think that we, much like Peter, will stand by Jesus' side, rock solid, whatever may come. And yet we as well have moments of weakness when we realize that we aren't as strong as we thought we were. In these moments, may Jesus come to us as well with his grace to build us up, to hold on to us, because he has a task for us to do. May the fire of faith not cease that Jesus got started with in us. Die Erfahrung der Jünger, aber auch des Paulus auf dem Weg nach Damaskus in der Apostelgeschichte im neunten Kapitel, lehrt uns, dass uns die Begegnung mit dem auferstandenen Jesus nicht unverändert lässt. Unser Leben wird von Ostern her verwandelt. Auch wenn wir unsere Erfolge zählen können, sollen wir erkennen, dass wir stets auf Jesus zählen können. 
Und letzten Endes gebührt nicht uns Lob und Ehre und Preis und Gewalt von Ewigkeit zu Ewigkeit, sondern dem, der auf dem Thron sitzt und die Fülle des Lebens hat. Mit den Ältesten und allen Geschöpfen im Himmel und auf Erden wollen auch wir vor ihm niederfallen und ihn anbeten. The experience of the disciples and that of Paul on the way to Damascus in Acts chapter 9 teaches us that the encounter with the risen Lord does not leave us unchanged. Easter transforms our lives. Just as the disciples counted the fish in the net, we may be able to count our successes and our blessings, but we can't take too much credit for what we think are our own achievements. With the disciples we should spend more time relying on the Lord. In the end, all blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever is not owed to us or our achievements, but to him who sits on the throne and who gives us fullness of life. With the elders and every creature in heaven and on earth, let us fall down before him and worship him. Amen. Und der Friede Gottes, welcher höher ist als alle menschliche Vernunft, bewahre eure Herzen und Sinne in Christus Jesus, unserem Herrn. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, lend your blessing to your Church, that all who endeavor in your name may be in accord with your will and accomplish your holy purpose in calling many to know with joy your redemption. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Mighty God, your word brings faith by the power of your Holy Spirit. Fill the nets of your gospel with many servants, who hear your good news and believe by the power of the Holy Spirit. Bless pastors, missionaries, and all church workers who serve in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Lord, give to us strength in the face of temptation, courage in the face of fear, comfort in time of distress, and resolve in the face of persecution. Help us to abound in hope in every circumstance through faith in Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Compassionate Lord, you know the needs of your people. Supply grace sufficient for all our needs. Give to the sick healing, to the suffering relief, to the troubled peace, to the grieving comfort, and deliver the dying to your rest. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, those who die in Christ rest in him, awaiting with us a day of days, when the veil of death is cast off, and we are received into your everlasting presence, and to the life that death cannot end. Receive our thanks for the mighty saints of old and for their witness. Keep us in Christ, that we may be reunited with all who have gone before us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gott des Lebens, du wächst neue Hoffnung und hast in Christus aller Welt gezeigt, dass deine Liebe stärker ist als der Tod und Hoffnungslosigkeit. Du hast dem Leben zum Recht verholfen, darum kommen wir zu dir mit allem, was uns bewegt. Christus hat die Seinen immer wieder um seinen Tisch versammelt, segt seine Kirche mit der Gabe der Gastfreundschaft, lass Gemeinschaft wachsen über alle Traditionen hinweg, dass wir der einst alle versammelt sind um deinen Tisch. Wir rufen zu dir, schenke neues Leben. In der Schönheit der Schöpfung erkennen wir deine Liebe. Öffne uns die Augen, dass wir nicht übersehen, wo Pflanzen und Tiere unseres Schutzes bedürfen. Wir rufen zu dir, schenke neues Leben. Wir sind dankbar, dass wir frei und offen unseren Glauben bekennen dürfen. Wir bitten dich für Menschen, die um ihres Glaubens willen verfolgt werden. Wir denken besonders an die Christen, deren Leben in Gefahr ist weil sie sich zu Christus bekennen. Halte deine Hand schützend über sie. Öffne Peinigern und Verfolgern die Augen für die Grausamkeit ihrer Taten, dass sie umkehren von ihren falschen Wegen. Wir rufen zu dir, schenke neues Leben. 
Wir sind dankbar für alle Menschen, die in dieser Gemeinschaft bis heute mit ihren Gaben zum Segen aller gewirkt haben. Dankbar denken wir an alle zurück, die uns vorangegangen sind im Glauben. Weise uns den Weg in die Zukunft, dass wir Gaben teilen und der Welt dienen in deinem Namen. Wir rufen zu dir, schenke neues Leben. Gott, du lässt die Hoffnung niemals verloren gehen. Nimm dich unserer Bitte an, nach deiner Güte, und bewahre uns in deiner Liebe, durch Jesus Christus, unseren Herrn. Lord God, to you alone be all glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray with the words that our Lord Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lasst uns beten mit den Worten, die uns unser Herr Jesus Christus gelehrt hat. Vater unser im Himmel, geheiligt werde dein Name. Dein Reich komme, dein Wille geschehe, wie im Himmel so auf Erden. Unser tägliches Brot gib uns heute. Vergib uns unsere Schuld, wie auch wir vergeben unseren Schuldigern. Und führe uns nicht in Versuchung, sondern erlöse uns von dem Bösen. Denn dein ist das Reich und die Kraft und die Herrlichkeit in Ewigkeit. Amen. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Wir wollen uns unter den Segen des Herrn stellen. Der Herr segne euch und behüte euch. Der Herr lasse sein Angesicht leuchten über euch und sei euch gnädig. Der Herr erhebe sein Angesicht auf euch und gebe euch seinen Frieden. Amen.